If I ever tell you that there is never a possibility for multiple applications to a text, I give you permission to slap me across the face. Spiritually, please, just spiritually, not physically. Please, please, please. What's going on, you guys? It's Tana here at The Vision Project, where we strive to display the love of Christ through the art of storytelling. Here's what we're looking at today. Can there be multiple meanings to a text? When an author is writing something in the scriptures, in a text, in a passage, whatever it may be, could there possibly be multiple meanings verse by verse? Now, when we're looking at the context of the audience, so you and I, the people that are reading the scriptures, you and I have something that we call a presupposition or a pre-understanding. That means that we have a foreknowledge before we read a text. So you and I might have been raised differently. For example, if I had grown up in a more progressive or liberal home, there's a chance that I believe that homosexuality is not a sin, that it should be acceptable, and that God loves all people and all sexual desires. Now, on the other hand, if I grew up in a very conservative home, which for the most part I did, I grew up you know, conservatively, I personally don't believe that homosexuality should be acceptable and especially in the eyes of God not by you know me as a human but that homosexuality is a sin so I have that foreknowledge going into scripture now for you you might have something different you grew up differently and that you had a different culture surrounding you growing up and really as you grow up we all have these different things that happen in our lives that are spoken to us more specifically usually by our parents and that really identifies with us going forward for the future so usually the way that we're brought up the way that we're growing up or different past experiences that we have really determine what our presuppositions and pre-understandings are pre-understanding i didn't en enunciate that very well now when we're digging into the text this is when what we call exegesis becomes very very extremely important now don't believe in the lie that exegesis is only for preachers and for your pastors on Sunday. Exegesis is for everybody. Exegesis is for you and I to practice each and every day. What we're trying to get rid of is what we call eisegesis. Now, before I explain exegesis, let me explain what that is. That means I'm applying myself and placing myself into the text rather than the text applying to me in my daily life here and now. As I dig into the historical and cultural context of those ancient times, I can dig and, and pick apart all of these different things and then figure out how that applies to me here and now in the modern days rather than trying to place my modern mindset into an ancient text if that makes sense I hope it does so rather than selfishly and pridefully placing myself into the scriptures what I'm trying to do is figure out the initial intent the original intent of what the author was trying to relay to the original audience as well as how it applies to me here and now now that we have context to the problem let's get to the issue and talk about why there can't be multiple meanings to a text don't get it wrong we talked about interpretations there can be many interpretations and applications but there cannot be multiple meanings let's dig into that have you ever written something before in school i know that i have and for most of us i'm sure you have been educated in school at some way or some point where you've had to write something and i know for myself when i'm writing something or typing something whatever it may be i'm not looking for a thousand different meanings in a sentence a paragraph whatever it may be i'm trying to concentrate on one specific meeting i'm you know touching on one subject and i'm trying to hit on that one meaning and surround all of these different evidences to provide you know clear understanding for one specific meaning of a text now when it comes to the original authors of scripture it's the same exact thing there's one intention behind the scripture there's multiple interpretations for that one meaning that we're seeking after and so for us as humans we're imperfect i'm imperfect you're imperfect we all fall short and that means with our understandings as well and so what we're trying to seek after each and every day when we're reading the scriptures is we're trying to find the original meaning of the text now you're probably wondering where i got my information from and if you're curious this is the source right here this big boy um, has been a big part of my college career at Moody Bible Institute. Um, this is Introduction to Biblical Interpretation. And here we're in chapter six. 
which is called the goal of interpretation. So it's all about you know what our goal is as readers of the text, no, not just preachers on Sunday. Like I said, it's for everybody. It's for all of us. Let's read it. It says, Whenever we try to understand the thought of a text, if we are to understand it critically, we must first of all grasp the nature and degree of the differences that separate our understanding from the understanding of the text. Only then can we profitably fuse our horizon of understanding with the horizon of the understanding of the text. Here's another question that I think that we should cover here today. It says, how would you respond to someone who says that meaning only occurs when readers create meaning in their reading of the text? That doesn't sound anything close to what I've learned from this book at all. What I've really understood is that there isn't a meaning that's always been there. It's just our presuppositions and pre-understandings get in the way of what the original meaning is intending and what the intention is behind the text. So, so what did we learn today? Are there multiple meanings to a text? The answer is no. There is only one initial meaning that is influenced by the Holy Spirit for a text in scripture. Hey, I'm so glad that you joined us today here on this video. If you liked it, give us a thumbs up. And if you're honest and you disliked it, give us a thumbs down. It helps us so much. I would love feedback in any sort of way possible. If you like this content and this kind of content, go ahead and hit the subscribe button and the notification bell so you know when the next video comes. If you also didn't know, we have a podcast called the VP Podcast where we try to touch on different subjects as well as share people's testimonies, which is what we call Testimony Tuesdays. And one is coming up soon with a very, very special guest and close friend of mine, and I'm looking forward to that. So stay tuned for more content. We're out of here, though, for today. See ya.